Welcome. Welcome, welcome, guys. Oh, man. Sorry for the bundle up. I'm kind of a little bit freezing here. I heard a lot of things happening this morning. I heard Hoth. I heard a bunch of stuff. Um, kind of wanted to hop on here early just to see what uh see what the earlier keynote presentation was all about so uh i know it starts in probably about a half hour but so i'm just starting a little bit early because i wanted to take a look of go back and revisit some of that old footage from earlier in the morning so let me pull up i'm um, pulling up the star citizen stream now there we go and derelict ship <laughs> Now let's go ahead and activate all that content. That's a lot of content to simulate when no one is around to see it. A lot of pathfinding NPCs, animations, vehicle <laughs> physics, collision detection. Now let's go ahead and introduce a player and clear the board. Those pirates and freighters and everything else, they still exist, but only in a probabilistic state. As the player traverses the volume about volume economics the here? from the various curves and force the probabilities of the displays. Does that content exist at that location or doesn't it? Here, the player gets a hit from the asteroid probability. So the mission database has been queried to find missions. <laughs> I was going to watch the old stuff, but now I'm kind of, um, I kind of want to listen to this. And now a bit later, the, fra the player trips the freighter probability and then eventually runs into a pirate. The key point here is that much of the world exists as, as a superposition of probabilities until a player gets sufficiently close that the wave functions collapse at which point we instantiate them and start simulating the full-blown entities. One of the quirks with probability volumes is that they usually represent a variety of low-frequency events. Space is big after all, and even in a pretty heavily populated area, you shouldn't be running into other ships all that often. The problem is that so the what are they talking about here? What happens simultaneously is a product of the probabilities, meaning that it's very unlikely you'd ever see two or more at the same time. So let's go ahead and see what this means in practice. Here's a player traversing a probability volume. He makes it through a good part of it before the freighter's probability curve determines that an encounter has occurred, at which point the probability volume queries the mission database with the freighter tag and instantiates a compatible mission. The player continues on, and shortly thereafter, the pirate's probability curve indicates a hit, which triggers another lookup into the mission database. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with Bending this. Probabilities. It's a pretty accurate representation of what you'd realistically expect to see. Two rare events happening on their own schedule. The systemic behavior of the freighter and the pirate, even if spawned separately, would allow them to logically react to one another. So if they were spawned in close enough proximity, the pirate might even attack the freighter. The problem is that this approach lets the algorithms dictate too much of the experience, and if you're not careful, this can lead to the gameplay starting to feel very formulaic. What we really want is the ability for designers to craft more custom content and to then have a mechanism by which we can trigger it such that it all feels logical if a bit lucky in the timing. There we go. <laughs> He's like, what? Our slides seem to keep talking. Uh, yeah, we seem to be having a couple technical problems. It's okay. I have technical problems too. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. So I jumped right into this. I don't know what he's talking about. Citizen con, am I right? Yeah. All right. Hey, Tom. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, I was hoping to hop on a little bit early. I wanted to check out some of the, the earlier presentation. Maybe if they're having technical difficulties, I'll pull it up real quick. I'm really pumped. I'm sure they'll get this resolved in a second. I was, a lot of uh, people on Discord stuff, they're like, Hoth? What's Hoth? Like, something to do with Hoth. I, was, I guess there's an ice planet or something. I don't know. It'd be interesting. Anyway, I just hopped on because... Why not? It's a little bit odd to spend the first 20 minutes talking about all the problems with the game and how they've made creating one solar system so incredibly difficult but i do think i i, I love this i love how they have yeah nice planet that looks like hoth oh, okay i want to check that out while they're doing this i do like the awkwardness of them okay, so we're back in live 
So what we do instead of basically allowing the algorithms to All right, let's check this out. control Pause this. I think I had this queued up. Oh, this is that trailer. This is the trailer they released a couple hours ago. They must have did that before the first part. The cool part about the new game. Oh, I read about that. My father always used to say it's like I part Halo, part Tribes, part that Eve first person shooter spinoff, right? <laughs> I, know some, I threw a comment this morning on the I watched this this morning. I threw a comment up on it. About like in you know, I want I want the planets more than I want the ship. <laughs> it actually blew up. The comment blew up. We all wonder what's out there. <laughs> that was funny. But for me, it was more than like because I want this. I, like I don't <laughs> Battlefield, yeah. I love Battlefield. A stranger in my own world. I set out to find my path. <laughs> I don't want to run out of time. Let me uh, fast forward a little bit. I've already seen this part. Was done by our uh, marketing cinematic group, which uh, did an amazing job on the the world here. Uh, Porsche. So Glenn, come on up. Glenn runs it every year, doesn't he? Stand up. Uh, that I will bring. A lot more sort of physical inventory and what you're going to use, and you'll sort of see that. There we go. The tech stuff. Uh, all right, so uh, let's get dressed. Get a dress, put a jacket on. So it's the beginning of we. We're still working on some of our, uh, but ultimately we're going to. There'll be a lot more sort of physical inventory and what you're going to use, and you'll sort of see that why it comes into effect later on in the demo. Uh, and uh, let's just do a little bit of a tour, maybe go off to the mess. Grab a morning, a bit of morning coffee. Here's a cool table. We are bored on a long journey, exploring the frontiers. The second part of this starts at three o'clock, right? Tom, I didn't charge my headset. Look, I got my portable battery attached. Right? On the other side of the, uh, the living. Ugh. Been out and about all day. Look out the window, maybe. Yeah, we can't see the plan out no, it's, there, right? it's on, it's on the other side. All right, let's have a little cup of coffee. How long is this one? It's like half hour. Right? Crap, not gonna be able to finish it by the time the thing starts. Is that squirting out coffee? So we had coffee in the last. last Wait, time. is that actually <laughs> dripping? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I saw drips come out of that coffee maker. You will have to eat. You will have to. Drink. That's kind of cool. Again, we're not trying to make it so that you have to do it every hour or anything like that, but it is part of survival. Right. Oh. Whoops. I know, I'm just scared to miss something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, little fluid effects. I love that. See how the fluid shook a little bit when you put it down? That was dope. Uh, this is one of our other players, Joe, on the Carrick. Uh, this is a point you just ever got down again? Yeah. Really? Okay. I'll uh, try it. So Joe was actually, uh, I'll try 1.5. Switch to just have a comment. Sorry, uh, uh, the, the back end. That's good too because all the walking is really slow. It was on in our previous and then it went off and then it's on again. So here's Sam. Hey Sam. Morning. 
So uh, her voice, her voice isn't working either. Well, no, it's just the voice service down. Yeah, so no, no, they were working. We we spanned it just before you guys came in. It worked. Yeah. Now it's down. It was up the other side. So basically, uh, she will be sharing a mission with us, and then at that point in time, <laughs> Gwen will go meet a contact um, on the planet. Do, so in three seven, do, we do, mission do, sharing. I like and, the music. Um, obviously, we still have some group work to do to make things feel fluid and getting in and out of parties and all of that. But basically, this is another step into making sure that you know it. We want people to play together, um, or we want the players to at least have the ability, or if they have the desire to play yeah. together, to, to do uh, it very quickly. <coughs> so this is the mission to go down onto down to Microtech, which is the first time we're gonna go down there and uh, visit part of it. That's what I'm saying. It's not Star Citizen without uh, bugs. Software encryption. Algorithm. So not just Silicon Valley, it's also here in Star Citizen Space. Uh, the encryption of algorithms are very important. Um, so we're getting that from Twitch. So, wow, uh, million credits. No, 100,000 we'll credits. Accept that and let's head down. And what's, what's already happened is uh, Sam has sent one of our other players down to go and get a uh, couple items that you would need for the mission, which is a scientist outfit and a key card. So uh, Glenn is now going to go into the Carrick, uh, into okay. the Pisces, sorry, and head down to Microtech. So we're going to keep the Carrick up in order and we're going to go down to uh, New Babbage on Microtech. Microtech. Can't wait to see it. This must be the Hoth planet, right? So, as you start seeing here, we are rolling out the new building blocks in the U.S. <coughs> um, this has been a, a large initiative on our team to uh, basically... I don't know where I saw, developers to I where I saw that, but um, um, when they're baking things, I love uh, the new so buttons. Elevator buttons. By our, our previous, uh, smaller UI team. <laughs> right, it's much more immersive. And, uh, uh, do that. There, I think, is a drone room down on the left hand side, I believe. Yep. Uh, and here is the. Someone uh, tweeted at me there, like a couple there. hours ago saying it was like the best looking. You know, it's gonna be interesting. I got actually a friend coming on. He's he's coming on the Discord channel. And he's a, he's a star citizen, like pessimist. So it's gonna be a kind of a. And in the back of there's a two rear it's gonna be a cool back and forth. Here. Um, but they said that Hoth was. No, Hoth, I'm calling Hoth. Hoth. Microtech was beautiful. Imagine it be said. I'm gonna skip it a little bit. Alright, we're gonna go. Save some time here. And uh, let's set a course to um, Microtech. Right screen is. Let me know if I missed something cool. I just want to make sure I get to the planet. Little station around Microtech, and as we're going to descend down to Microtech, I want to bring Ian onto the stage. Ian Leland is our art director of uh, the Persistent Universe, and so one of the big things that we're rolling out uh, with 3.8 is Procedural Planet Tech V4, which is pretty amazing. And uh, Ian, I want you to start talking about it. Okay, hi everyone. So, Planet Tech V4. This has been a major tech initiative. The CIG. Uh, it's something that we felt very passionate about working on. And so that's the name of this then, V4. That's what that guy was talking about in the comment. Someone replied to that comment I left them. Ah. Oh. Ain't nobody got time for ads. Your fast reflexes require a more advanced gaming mode. LG Ultra Gear, innovation beyond boundaries. So we're really excited to kind of put it on screen today. So it should be a seamless transition. Also oh, here, we'll go back. hopping, crossfading, we, we want to get rid of that com completely. So it should be a seamless transition. Ah, uh, hold on. Let's talk about the transition. It's kind of important, right? Previously, we couldn't have done a planet like this before. So we're really excited to kind of put it on screen today. One of the first things that you'll see is now we have what we're calling large scale terrain shadows. So what this means is even large from space, you'll see terrain shadows. formations like a mountain sure. has like long, beautiful shadows across the landscape. Over the top, and because like microtech is largely of. snow, this is kind of important, right? Another principle of V4 <sighs> is we want to dramatically reduce the amount of biome tiling. So what we want to do is it should be a one to one. So what you see in space is what you see on ground. The type of hopping, crossfading, we, we want to get rid of that. Com Look at the detail so level of this height. Also, here, we knew it was going to do a cold planet. We thought it'd be really good to have a frozen ocean. So this was a brand new shader that we put into development. And what we have right now is it's physicalized, so we can walk and drive on it. Yeah. 
You can walk and drive on the ice. Internally, we're just in love with this technology. It empowers the art team to be able to just create amazing artwork. Look at this shit on the windshield. Look at this shit on the windshield. So one of the things that we've added is, is basically, uh, and this will tie again into the actor system that we show off later, but planet we, we call it the room system basically and the room system allows us to have humidity it could be a planet system yes, or it's a system. basically an environment yeah. uh, container so <laughs> chris is like it's it's, it's environments humidity based, and it's all systemic so if it's a humid planet then you'll get precipitation on the cockpit or on your visor or yeah and it will also affect things like the contrails and the effects yeah. and it's all tied in uh which later it's on it's gonna affect the actual chemtrails wow uh the other thing uh that we can talk about other than how beautiful uh prop planet b4 looks also the fact that like i don't know if you noticed but it's like you don't see repetition of biomes you don't see i mean it just Seamlessly from the outside in, it's just smooth. It's pretty awesome. There's some talks today that we'll talk about the graphics tech behind it and also yep. just how they created the stuff. Wow, this uh, chat is going crazy, huh? Couple, one other thing I want to point out, which is not necessarily the planet tech before, but it's uh, we've been sort of working on the flight experience, uh, and that's an ongoing project for the combat and the flight experience. But one thing that we'll roll out in 3.8 is what we call uh, the look ahead uh, setup for the cockpit. Trees. So if Glenn is flying around here, what we do is we actually take notice of where the velocity vector of the ship is going to be, where the horizon line, if you're on a planetary body, if it's space, obviously you wouldn't worry about that. And also if you had a selected target and wow. the view uh, basically gets uh, sort of biased towards that. And so as you're flying around, you'll feel the cockpit move around you. And it's quite similar if you see people fly, like Tarada does, you know, really cool flying and he's got head tracking on, right? And you can see pilots generally look where they're going. And also if you're a racing car driver, you look where you're wow. going. So that's kind of the idea here, rather than having a very static fixed view. You can, of course, turn it off if you don't like it, but we think it gives a much more fluid experience. We've also been working on the uh, chase camera stuff, so there'll be more fluid vehicle chase camera. You'll see it here. You'll see it a bit later on. Uh, and and uh, generally that sort of stuff that we're continuing. Look at the, um, look at the, look at around. Here we are. We're kind of coming <laughs> up to... Babbage, I'll give it also, another thing which is super interesting. <laughs> a lot of love when it's <laughs> like so. Look at the detail over here. Look at that. A lot that. of very good artists working on him, but the objects are being distributed and being informed by the terrain. So if you actually look at where those pine trees are, I was gonna say the trees look, the, the trees, trees look very well placed. It looks like they're in the valleys, the valleys up the sides, good. in the sh in the sun. Also, another interesting thing is this planet data is also being utilized for things like game logic, VFX. That's like good. That. Yeah, well, the, the VFX is determined by the biome and the environmental data, so you'll get mist rolling over mountains Correct. depending on the atmosphere and, and the biome data. So it's all very procedural. Okay, so we're coming into the outer districts of New Babbage here. One of the most important things we did when we started this landing zone is we wanted to learn from the experience of creating Lawville Area 18. So as we fly over, we wanted to remove these big walls we had to previously build around these landing zones. So when you look down there, you can land there. A lot of you asked me previously, is like, why can't we land there? So that's been a huge initiative. Yep. Wait, you can, he's saying they're opening up the zones so you can actually land uh, also, other places, create, places in the city. We're improving the no-fly zone and how yeah. you visualize into it. So we won't have like this big ugly mesh that just gets in the way and blows you up. So I think that will help in most locations. But yeah, you can definitely see the oh, learning awesome. that's gone over multiple landing zones. Uh, coming to fruition in New Babylon, which to me feels like probably the best of our sort of cityscapes. So, yeah. so there's still going to be entrances, right? You don't have to go through the landing zone. You can, there'll still be entrances into the city, right? The Aspire brand. Good job, Glenn. See if we can get through that. Uh, fancy dancy. Nice job, man. The Aspire brand is probably where, if you were starting in on New Babbage, yes. one of the places you would have your ham. I've got a slide to show you later on today. What wow, I can't see. I can't so wait to see what the ends are going to be. Your, land, your uh, have to be on New Babbage. That's where it's going to be. Yeah, and we, we will not necessarily create, but we're going to start transitioning next. It's year. such an easy thing. Well, maybe it's not an easy thing. I don't know. When you turn, do you think the precipitation on the windshield like kind of rolls a different way? That'd be. That'd be insane. That's probably too much though. And we also understand that you want to get in and out very quickly. So again, that's why we're putting halves in the space station's round. So then you can stay there. You can get in and out very quickly. Oh yeah, no, I was getting exactly. So in spaceports, we'll like have uh, like uh, like motels in airports. We'll have that as an option when you land or not. And then also you can have more your sort of permanent apartment in the city, so you have to speak. And you just pick where it is. So uh, I think we're going to be. We're just heading now to uh, the kind of new Babbage uh, interstellar spaceport, uh, which is actually not. Uh, it's across the frozen lake. Or it's ocean. across the lake. One yeah. interesting thing is when we were designing. Babbage, is, is that built into the bottom of the... Is that built into the side of the... No. Yeah, it is. It's built on the side of the hill. It has twice the capacity of previous spaceports, and Chris laid down the challenge. Oh, it's really cool. Let's, let's try building a spaceport in the side of a mountain, and we were like, okay, Chris, let's, <laughs> let's give it a try. Oh, I need to 
to show off those nice Microsoft miners. <laughs> Yeah, but eight frames per second. So we've been working on our comms calls, uh, in terms of what we consider a gold standard on that, and then we will slowly roll that out to every every. AI. Yeah, yeah. And then we saw, yeah. Uh, so Fly in. Let's go. Let's go two okay. X. So yeah, let's head in. Come on, Glenn. You can do it. Oh, I didn't. I didn't even register. There's horizontal uh, ports. Port doors. I like that. What? Right. And I, 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 and there's, you can see, yeah, uh, this is just a small landing pad, right? This is, a small this is only a small one, just to let you guys know. I think it's small, medium, large, and extra large. large. So that's just to give you an idea of scale, which I think one of the things is great with Star Citizen is just that level of scale that can go from, you know, the coffee cup all the way up to the planet. That's cool. That looks so friggin' good. Do you know if the second part is gonna be on the same planet? Got time and got us, got us a uh, microtech science coat and a fake ID. It's just like going out drinking PS16. And a fake ID. I never did that. Yeah. Sorry about it. So just one, one thing to note on 3.8. So micro. So. <laughs> I feel like this is fast. This should be actually how fast we were. We had to redo every single planet and every single moon. So we did that actually in two months, yes. which is a testimony of how quicker the workflow is. So not only is the quality better, but the workflow is much better because we basically redid everything in about two years and two months, uh, which is a really good sign for the future and creating uh, more content. But in 3.8, we will have Microtech, uh, but New Babbage itself won't be available in 8 as a, as it's in internally. Yeah. It will be there externally. And then in 3.9, the, the full of New Babbage will be there. We can go and yep. visit the various areas of it. Uh, and I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about the spaceport here. Just to well, you can make a call first, but okay. we'll see if it's well, I, I, I think the Voight thing they might have restarted the server. I don't know if the server's down. All right. <laughs> So the context is meeting me in the garage area. Yeah. We're trying to show group gameplay, yeah. but uh, the, the voice service <laughs> and the, the voice and also the animation based data is being really finicky on our server here. So. So as Chris mentioned, uh, New Babbage is going to be our first landing zone where we're not building it in the utilitarian art style. Uh, previously, we've made things like outposts. Uh, wow, look at that view. Style, but this is our first opportunity to build a landing zone from scratch. So what you're seeing here is a, a kind of a glimpse at what the inside of uh, New Babbage uh, will feel like. I think we get to New Babbage by that high loop. Like if you look, like if you look in the, yeah. those, those lines you see there are the... Hey, good luck, Tom. Yeah, get to the New Babbage has all these different uh, various either living areas or uh, shop areas. The domes. Like Our Cortina like uh, microtech, yes, uh, the greeter. Read it. What do you call a mobile with computational use that is completely made out of helium? Mobile gas. Can I help you with anything else? Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it stopping by. Good luck on your stream. All of them. Yes. Yep. All right, let's go. Thank you, Dave. I'm going to write to you, Larry. All right. It was nice chatting with you. I hope you enjoyed the rest of your visit. Okay, so let's uh, <laughs> test meet up Rob and uh, get our fake ID and uh, let's go. I'll just sit there and play those jokes all day. So this is how you would access the garages that we have, so you can drive around the city and drive around the planet. Grab your coat, yo. So, uh, so what the case, hell? Yeah, the idea is uh, that all the outfits, like the cloth outfits you have, will be physically like someone showed later. So we have this sort of new plus. Whoa, 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 whoa. Be able to take your jacket off, drop it on the ground. It will crumple on the ground. I come every no! year to see the. Oh my god, I want to see that shit. No light shining a light on moderators for Twitch is just amazing to me. We can't do what we do without the countless number of mods. They're unsung heroes. Oh my Being god. Meet, meet this. Did you guys see that? That was literally cloth. That was soft body cloths. In game for an object, an actual object. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh my god. Let's check the other let's check the other stream real quick. That idea earlier, which is the shop right now is a simple consumer. Is this live? It's burning off that inventory. Yeah. The difference here is that the solution to that is very simple in the context of quantum. And the reason is these quanta, the next step of what we I feel like I would really love this presentation. They'll actually require ships. Ships require engines. And so all of a sudden, I like the, real I like the processes. For how many power plants do you need? How many ships do you need? It all follows the oh, same you know, logical equation. Whoa. And you'll see this why it makes a. a all right, we're back. All right, let's get a lab coat. Grab it, grab it. 
Why should it just slip off? <laughs> oh man, that's that is. And then you could. Uh, so it's an object. It's an actual tangent. It's a. I could drop it. I could place it back. If you place it. Whoa. So I could place it back on the container, and it would. I gotta listen to what he's saying. I'm just busy talking. I could watch that on repeat all day. So, uh, it's early days yet, but the idea is uh, that all the outfits, like the cloth outfits you have, will be physicalized. We'll have some stuff we'll show them later. So we have the sort of new cloth stuff that I think we've shown uh, in early days before, but you'll be able to take your jacket off, drop it on the ground, it will crumple on the ground, wave it around. <laughs> uh, and so we're, we're moving towards having everything physicalized. So if you're flying somewhere and you'll see this white makes a, a white maddie makes where are you you got to see this come on that would even impress you is you know make sure you're equipping yourself correctly yes. have you got the right clothes uh, oh my god that was fantastic uh, suits, armor, and we're also <laughs> i actually enjoyed that more i enjoyed that more than so like the pretty trees in the white armor background suit, that's not something you can sit down and say fly a fighter with or something Correct. but it may be what you need outside to survive a hostile environment so we, um, we grab it looks like 19 yeah, so we got the chip yeah uh, okay well, looks like 2008 let's, tech uh, let's head up and get on the uh, worker shuttle to the microtech uh research facility hey. yeah he's still talking and this is a, this is sort of an example of a longer term multi-stage mission not in 3a but later on yes. we're building uh that so there will be challenges that are sort of you versus you know ai environmental challenges versus just also the general you know pvp emergent gameplay that can happen okay let's hopefully that works oh, all right we're through With elevators the world over. Wait for them. <laughs> and then there, they are. Okay, Microtech. Home of the Moby Glass. And, uh, okay, see? No, no more of those, the silly button with yeah. the interaction on. You're actually interacting straight with panels. I know, Chris. That is, again, as Todd was saying, part of what the building block UI is going to allow us to embed Such UI and interactions cool. much easier in the, in the game. So, we're up on the, the rooftop shuttle area. And so one thing that we'll get into later, but we have the player status system is now extending beyond oxygen into temperature. As you can see that it's cold. I don't know if you noticed, but we are actually have breath coming out of our mouth. Did not work. Oh my God, there's air. I didn't even, I was like, what is he talking about? And if you want to look around your, uh, <laughs> Nobody's got helmets on. Breathing, I guess. So d another big thing that was just seen was basically AI transitioning from one zone to another zone. Is that a void face? It's cold. <laughs> yeah. See, they, he should be wearing his nice warm. Uh, but, all right, let's get on. Let's. There, sorry. But yeah, so like Todd was saying, it's early stages yet, but um, you know we have AI transitioning between zones and grids, nav meshes, so. Theoretically, you can have an AI come fly, a whole group of AI it's fly in, and a whole bunch of troops get out, say, the back of a cutlass as reinforcement Correct. in a combat and you fight, which is uh, it's a, you know, it's something we haven't been able to do up to date, so it's really quite cool. And uh, this, is a, this is actually an AI flown yep. ship that's taking us on a shuttle towards a research facility. end of part one we've got some cool stuff that will come back at the end of the day in part two uh, to uh, show you some even bigger stuff we're working on 
Okay. So. Let's switch back over. And now I let's ask go ahead chat. and increase the supply of aluminum and see what happens. So we're going to add a few new mines. I'm not late so let's add for the keynote. Yeah, I... Oh, let's I guess not. <laughs> Other people are asking for the keynote. Though. 30 minutes? I thought it was at 3. Star Citizen schedule. No, citizen comments. And lastly, we're going to do Lyria. <laughs> and if you remember, we already have an aluminum mine on Delamar. I did know that. They're telling us we need to hurry up. <laughs> jump ahead, I guess. Uh, uh, I, you, want you guys want us to hurry up or keep going? Chris is like, get the hell off the stage. <laughs> All right, so it's like 400 to 1. <laughs> I really wanted to watch this presentation, too. add a couple more aluminum too. refineries as well to the Crusader L4 and Arcorp L1. So now let's go ahead. We just added all of this new aluminum. So let's head back to that Hurston factory and see what aluminum prices are doing there. What's that factory having to pay for aluminum with all this new supply, these new mines, these new refineries? Oh, is this a simulator? And there you see that the price oh is my God. to fall off. Can you speed, speed, it, speed it up a little bit? Let's let you see what it does. And if you see, it continues to plummet. My brother is going to flip. So those prices are pretty much falling off a cliff now. Yeah. From all that extra supply that's been brought on without us having to go back and rebalance anything. Um, so let's go ahead and head on over to Selen. And you can see that Selen is in very close proximity to Crusader. So you've got a ref an aluminum refinery and aluminum mine, and yet there's very little activity. And the reason is because the aluminum at that mine is very difficult to extract. So let's go ahead and adjust the mining time on Selen from 180 to 120. And what this, again, reflects is how difficult it is to extract from that particular location. And so you see there now you see a few guys are actually willing to put in the amount of work necessary to extract it. Not all of them. It's still a lot of effort. And this comes back to every one of these guys having their own individual uh, set of traits. So some of them were willing to endure you know, more risk, more, you know, you know, uh, more effort, that sort of thing. So let's oh go ahead now. And this is like the beginnings of what I've been dying for. Let's just go with normal pace. So let's make the Laronite more difficult to work with and more rare and see what happens there. So we're going to adjust the global Laronite refining time from 60 to 120. We're adjusting the time on Walla. We're going to do both. The global refining time, we want to take it to 60 to 120. And Walla's extraction time goes from 60 to 180. <laughs> this, is, this is so mad. So what we've just done is basically make it more time consuming, more difficult to refine it, and what we've basically fuck? made it more difficult to pull it out of the ground. So let's go ahead and apply a macro also to, refault, to reduce the default purity of Laronite from 50 to 16%, which means that refineries are going to need more ore to produce the same amount of refined product. Reactive. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the Laronite prices on the Hurston factory. 
So we just did three different things to make it considerably, you know, uh, more expensive for Laranite to be utilized. Let's see what I got time. And speed up, and you can see that Laranite prices are going up, up. It looks like they're starting to skyrocket. This could be a complete economic disaster. <laughs> if you notice, they're just going up, up, up. So what we're going to do now to bring that back into control is let's go adjust the power plant formula to compensate a bit. So let's adjust it from... Oh, what you need to build the power plant. To point one. But wait, is that something... So just reduce the amount of Laranite needed in the economy by 95%. I, I understand the need for that in the, the simulator, but that's not something they're planning on doing mid-game, right? <laughs> Changing up the schematics for the, for the actual... And what we should see here in a minute is Laranite should start to drop off pretty... I'm so worried Chris is going to shut this down. That's funny. And there you go. Crisis averted. This is a perfect way. To, it is very smooth. And this will continue to drop if we watch it. You always get a little bit of turbulence because you've already got contracts you know, set up and stuff. Right. Go ahead and leave it in. I just I want, to, I want to see it drop a little bit more. We all want to see it, Tony. He's like, <laughs> I want it to crash. That's what I would be. So it's, it's already down 40, 50 percent, and it'll keep, it'll keep falling. Um, OK. So now let's go ahead and add some additional factories. Delamar looks pretty dead. There isn't a lot of economic activity happening over there. So let's add a bit of life by adding a new power plant factory. And yeah, let's add a Hurston L4 factory for power plants as well to create a little bit of competition for aluminum. And then let's head on over to Hurston. Hurston factory. And let's check out their workers. Oh. You notice that their workers are falling off a cliff. What is happening? Well, we just opened up a new power plant factory and they're getting offered better wages from another place. And so Ooh. How much of that is going to be exposed to us, though? I got to break these things down. And what are the wages on, on, on Hurston? You can grab this guy. Let's see what the wages that they were offering. Um, oh, I can't see it. So they were up at, is that 0.25? Yeah, Delamar is offering like almost three times the wages of. Yep, so there you see the differential, which is that factory is more desperate for workers. And so you see, let's go actually go, l let's look at the, yep, the, to basically users. the workers skyrocketed on Delamar and plummeted on Hurston. Um, and eventually those wages, of course, stabilize uh. as they find a point of equilibrium, which is a big you know, point of you know, all of this. <laughs> I thought it was going to be an ad. So let's go ahead now and make some major changes. We're going to do this with a macro, and you can see where we currently stand on the slide. If Chris cuts us off, I'm going to get There's pissed. A bunch of stuff that we were supposed to be showing here. Absorb it quickly, everyone. <laughs> there we go. So we've added lots of aluminum, titanium, and degreesium. And the entries that you see on the screen mark system. All of the moons now have deposits. Uh, We've added a bit more Laranite, but it's still pretty rare. We've also added a lot of new refineries. We've added cooler and quantum drive recipes to most factories, and they require aluminum, Laranite, titanium, and degreesium. The demand for coolers and quantum drives has been introduced. Can you find and any material on every planet? And lastly, we've increased, you can see there at the bottom of the screen, the number of quanta from 1,000 to 2,000 so that we've got enough workers to keep the economy humming. Now, previously, we've seen pretty obvious cause and effect. At this point, though, the economy is starting to get pretty complicated. And we can look at a few graphs to see what's going on with some of the prices to uh, see this. And this is one of the most interesting things about a really complicated economy, which is these changes in quantities and prices, the purposeful movement of quanta, this dynamism, these are all opportunities that you'll, you're going to be able to exploit within the game. And they're in constant logical motion. So You're going to be able to exploit in the game. What does that mean? Be a shame if uh, somebody 
came to steal from these people, huh? Yep, we'll bring up a slide. Oh, okay. <laughs> you gotta bring a slide. <laughs> All right, so now we've, inter we've introduced some, some pirates. Um, let's go ahead, and so you can see that there are four pirate kraken. There's the Nova Riders, Low Riders, Nine Tails, and Dusters. Pirates have to return to one Hello? of their bases in order to refuel, rearm. Yo. Um, let's go ahead. Hello. If you notice, they head to the areas of highest right. value. Uh, if you, let's go ahead and zoom in well, there. Let me, uh... And you can see that those are missions being created by the NPCs, no different than doing, players buddy? would. In other words, you see a lot of deaths Good. on a route that's got a lot of value. Um, and <laughs> so there's this, I don't know if you're watching it, but there's, um, these well, are let me, I gotta mess with your, that are being thrown out by the your, uh, NPCs on that route. What's happening is the microphone, the NPCs are basically being, you know, some of the freighters are being picked on by the pirates. The ship is being destroyed. I'll just turn this down. Um, is, has ejected and needs transport back. To they're going over the economic, the they're going over the economy right now. The, <laughs> Chris came on. He's like, I gotta do my presentation. It didn't come on, but he's like. <laughs> these guys are like, <laughs> these guys are like, who wants us? Who wants us to finish? And the whole crowd goes wild, like wild because this is really interesting shit. At, uh, Hurston, the mm. Check this out. This is where they're operating out of, you guys. Yeah, I watched a little bit of the uh, the economy stuff, but um, you want to go check out? The I didn't. Hurston I was watching the other stuff. I didn't get a chance to see it. So since we've now got a lot of pirate activity on that route, we want to see what's happening to the cost of some of those goods. It seems like an odd thing to focus on at this point in the development because you can't do anything else. But well, that's what he's saying. There's ways to manipulate. There's ways to manipulate this, like coming. Coming, but you can't even like. Can you do any of this now, or I, like I'm not? Well, yeah, the, a lot of this is like, for instance, revolve around the mining, which you can, which is now. So like, yeah. But I just don't know how like the worker. He was talking about the workers. So let's go. Like if you open up a new, build a new power plant and build a new factory or something, there's like workers. I don't know. I gotta listen to the whole thing again. It sounds like Factoria. It does sound. Like, it does sound kind of like something like Factoria. And these quanta, as I mentioned earlier, is like they have various. Traits. And I don't think very risk averse. like this isn't this right here isn't a screen. Like this isn't a gameplay screen. I think this is just like a simulator application they have. Like this is just this is just a simulator. So here comes some security. And what you'll notice is that security is drawn to areas of conflict where there's a lot of deaths. And I have a feeling like Chris is going to come in any time and be like, "My turn." Speed it up a little bit, not 200. It's just 200 too fast. Just so you tell what's going on. And if you notice, by the way, the if you find your cord, will wind up patrolling an area, so they're in constant no. motion. Whereas the pirates basically are enabling uh, quantum no. prediction fields. That's why they're basically no, picking just a route to run and on, cable you know, through the stairwell a particular location well, so on the route between you know between two locations. Just and drill it, dude. Basically, you know, I did. And wait. <laughs> And the security, which doesn't know exactly where they are, is scanning the area looking for them. And so what you notice here is that the pirate situation is starting to look a lot better now that security has shown up. And you would see this reflected over in the prices. And so what you have here is... This is on my alley, this shit right here. But I just, I didn't catch it at the beginning, so... Pirates look for the areas where... A lot of this is out of context. They can reap the largest reward... Like, these tools look fascinating to me. Is then drawn to them. This is like an Excel simulator, baby. Yeah, it's like that other space simulator game where you just the MMO one. And again, this is very much like what you. I gotta figure out how to turn your volume up. Any logical functioning system. In your Discord settings. Under voice and video, is your in is your input volume high? Let's go ahead and turn on the the grid. Or low, I should say. And what you're looking at here is one of the big problems I referred to earlier is yeah. how we How's wind this? up getting samplings of this. A little more. Of how we generate that's as far as it goes. <laughs> okay, you that's can fine. look at one of these high conflict areas, and it's basically tabulating what? exactly what's in that area. So you can see that there are 10 total quanta, one freighter, 11 pirates, 5 security. 
Uh, it also this looks like civilization now. No, no, no. Space. Exactly what's going down that route. Let's take a look at a few other locations. Here you see oh, okay. So I didn't catch the beginning of this because I was watching the first keynote. And you know how they have the object system where you can pick stuff up and place thing, anything down any, anywhere, like a cup or whatever, any objects? So they have soft bodies physics they're adding. They, they showed a demo of the soft body physics for that. Meaning I pick up a coat off the ground, right? Fluid cloth, mo cloth physics. I put that actual coat on my body. I take that coat off and I throw it, put it on the ground or I put it on a chair. It put it on the ground. It just drops, you know, falls to the ground and lumps up. I put it on a chair. It folds over the chair, like actual cross physics. I, call it what you were, but that is that is something I've never seen in a game before, ever. The whole object system is just ridiculously ambitious. Yeah, but can you play multiplayer together without the game crashing? Yeah, dude, that's been like that for a while. You just haven't played. Oh, okay. <laughs> you mean? Can you play an alpha game together without crashing? That's what you mean. Request goods and services because they have a legitimate economic need and could buy with players to provide those things. We didn't have a way for this activity to determine what you see as you wander around the universe, thus eliminating the need to spend enormous sums of effort configuring vast quantities of static data that could never deliver the I think this guy's a physicist. Is 2949 the uh, release date or provides us with a lot more context. <laughs> You're not the first one to make that joke. I know. How much risk there is in taking an item from point A to Last year Citizen Con was 2948 I think. I guess that's the date in the game or what? Yes. Yes. We also get Can they just get somebody on here to say when it'll be done? Like this is just this is really stretched out. Environmental and mission diversity. I mean, like you know what? Uh, in February we're going to have beta access, you know, not alpha. Oh, how many NPCs? I didn't see. I only saw a little bit of the gameplay, but there's a there's the game mode. Manufacturing towns might. Uh, there's game mode coming in January. Um. It combines everything. It combines first person spaceship. Uh, I forgot what it's called. It's essentially Battlefield. Um, but with Halo mixed in, tribes mixed in, that first person Eve version mixed in. So they're taking the game and breaking off another chunk of it. We've got like the other, like the dog fighting stuff you can do. For integration with the rest of the game, but it's well, it's more like it's more like they finished functionality in the game and it makes a cool gameplay mode. And so they're cutting that off, but the rest of the game's not done. Well, it's just more like focused, you know. Like if you want to get into that. Okay. They cut him I off. Did. They definitely oh, cut him off. It was great. It actually uh, didn't seem as yeah. He's been on here forever. Like no, I don't know why they care so much about this. Weekend, who from this Australia is this. And a couple from Canada who had the crowd too, in general. When you do a con, <laughs> you do the boards and Q and A and stuff like that after the main event. Well, they already had a main event, dude. What they're doing different is the. It's the stuff I just. They get. They had a keynote. They had like a forty-minute keynote uh, demo, like showing, so showcasing new stuff. This is part two. I thought the. I thought the whole thing was coming but, um, at the end, but overall, it's so just split into two. And I. And they're saying, I don't know. They're saying like. I don't know. Just gotta watch it. <laughs> it's gonna be cool. Planned for months and months and gone through processes of review and for it finally to work out fantastically. That was awesome. And every booth had. I would even watch. Uh, I would even watch the. Um, yeah, and we went from four community booths last year to fourteen. Fourteen this year. I would even watch the uh, cosplay again. <laughs> oh no, that was terrible. That was just. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> I can't. The guy with the bag in his head. I don't know. I got it. Maybe. Maybe it was actually based on something, but I didn't recognize it. I didn't. Oh, you haven't played enough to. Well, the bag, it's, is it really a crumply bag in game that you put on your head? Theaters of War, that's the name of the mode. Theaters of War. That's a, that's a, first of all, that's a dope name. 
and uh, when you played it yourself. So the whole, po the whole point of the thing is uh, it, it, go it spans from like space to the ground, right? So there's space support. You know, there's like raining down in like areas, like stuff like that. But there's also like things where the troops have to go up into space, you know, through elevators or ships or something and attack something in space. So it's like Battlefield, but vertical, right? <laughs> Okay, that's cool. it, it looked really cool. The demo looked really, really cool. I know the first time, or the last time, I tried to play the first person, like the shooter part, where we couldn't find anybody to join the game. It was like Deathmatch or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was terrible. So hopefully they've improved that. <laughs> oh, you mean a year ago? Yeah. But a year ago in... Uh, Look. Citizen, citizen <laughs> time is Star Citizen time is like uh, you know a week. So. <laughs> I'm very good. Hey, board. What was your favorite? Oh, it's board gamer. I actually follow him. So the, one thing I actually want to um, I mean, is luck. I think I think honestly, you just need to take a step back and be like, hey, this isn't a game yet. This is. This is exactly what it is, and nobody else is doing it. This is a, you know, ongoing, you know, user tech demo. Yeah, you know. Like, there's no reason not to think it'll eventually get done, right? Because yes, there's plenty there of there's plenty of money. There's plenty of support. Money there's runs out. Support <laughs> runs out. People get annoyed that there nothing is happening. Yin, so they they create these cons, the citizen con, well, to make people be happy again. They're like, oh my god, this is really coming. Okay. Well, let me let me ask you this: if if no one takes a step forward to change, you just want to you want to stick into e, you want to stick into EA crunch modes. Is that your preferred method of? I mean, how many enjoyable games have been made out of the traditional development process in the last ten years for you? Right. 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 None. None. Okay, so get. I mean, you can hate on this or whatever. You can doubt it, I guess. But well, like, this this definitely is not one of them. <laughs> this this is definitely not one where I've logged in and been like, this is amazing. I have yet to feel that with this game. It is. A, it's a buggy pile to me. Like, I've never. You've never shown me. We've never. Cool. I've never logged in and been like, wow, this is impressive. Everything I've seen them do. Is a pipe dream, and I've never actually experienced any of it. Now, maybe it's because I haven't given it enough time. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe I haven't played it enough. But every time I log in and wake up in my bed made of molasses, it is the worst experience in gaming I've ever had. Every time. When you wake up in your little cell, you feel like you're in like a jar of jelly. The controls are terrible. It's not interesting. There's nothing interesting about it. Until I see that, this game is a glorified tech demo, a, a pipe dream that's never going to happen. Everyone's helping each other out. I didn't expect it to be that. The that's guy, that's like, what he looks like. That's Star Citizen. That's all the people I've met online. I mean, what's his name? Who's the main guy behind this? Chris Roberts. Yeah, he's a sham. He's never done anything. He's done the great, back in the, uh, what was it, early 90s, Wing Commander, and that's it. That's all he's done. He hasn't done anything else. No, he's got, a, he's got quite a few stuff under his belt, actually. He's got some games, yeah, but nothing nothing impressive. This is supposed to be the next big thing, and here we are. How many years has it been now? 10, 12, 13? I love it. I don't know. Did you get to watch any of the no, and it's still the same yeah, stuff. We're going to add this Taiwan, coming in next to beta or alpha. Like, okay, so great. Like, cool. So. Same people bring the things that we work so on it's so frustrating right? to me. It's I, I don't. Well, it's, it's only frustrating because you expect the game. You expect you expect to have you, you expect normal development processes for the game. That's all. That's the only reason it's disappointing. So that's that's the only the only thing that's wrong here is your expectation level. <laughs> Well, yeah, they're man. talking about a great game, right? It's supposed to be this great game, and I haven't seen it. Show it to me. Well, that's Show what. Me. So that's why okay. you're. So that's why I you're will, here right now. I will tell you that whenever I see <laughs> game demos from E3, right, of any game developer, I don't care who it is, 
people that show up. I'll be like, wow, I am really looking forward to playing that game when it comes out. I, I didn't get a right? You still have that experience, right? You're like, wow, that looks like it's going to be fun. This does never look like it's going to be fun. It never does anything. The most advanced thing I saw this game do was the Voight. The Void Talk. Somebody, I, I'm like, wow, that's neat. This morning, I was like, but What's it's in a game that doesn't okay. exist, like, oh, so you it's know, tweet, pointless. I think that's, lar I, I, I think it's I, largely I, I, because you don't watch anything on it. Because I feel like I'm going to fall asleep out of my chair. It's not exciting. There is nothing exciting about this. Like, well, here's the thing. I could show you that. I could show you that image like I, I actually don't think you understand like i don't think you understand like the object system yeah. friends i don't i, 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 I don't i don't in my head the way I, you describe it and that sounds great ben i love I, it <laughs> i don't think you understand That's, how big of a deal that is but that is not a oh my god this game's gonna be great thing that's one little aspect there's no but okay so i wake up in my molasses chair it's a foundational system that can make a big difference and Immersion gameplay. Oh, hold on. And then next, next year they'll change their engine. So. What the hell is Larry? Then they won't anyway? be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, here. This is why I invited you here, so you could you could actually take this with me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, oh, I, I expect you come away from this. I expect you come away from this with one or two uh, cool things. You're like, okay, well, that's that's pretty cool actually. Okay, I'm open. So, I am we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Jake, see thank you so much for that uh, presentation. Um, I I gotta be honest though, that new planet looks friggin' uh, phenomenal. That's not a toy you get to play with. Well, I haven't been to any of the planets, so. Well, okay, that's another thing. You haven't even landed on a planet. Like you've never, we never got to that point. Nine right, because so, the game you, kept crashing. It's, it's that unplayable. I, that's why I wanted you to play after the last. There's been two releases since you last played. Closing finale, the closing ceremonies, the keynote, the demo part two, whatever the heck you want to call it, uh, we are still setting up for that. So we are we are in filler mode. How are you guys doing? Good, Very good. good. Yeah, yeah. We have our Steam panel. Like here, um, here. go to them while this is on. Internally, is the peanut gallery. Uh, I did not name that. Like I mean, the, the developers. Me it, uh, to my they have great team, ideas. Have These guys, individual, the economy Jean system. Crew. That's cool. And then the guys, the physics guys, that's cool. Every, that is all cool. I appreciate that. But there's no <laughs> game. There's nothing to do with it. Well, again, you're expecting a game. You're expecting a game. Yes, after 10 years of development or however long and, it's been. And, 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 and I tell you, that's not, well, it's not what it's going to take to make a game that you're going to like for a long time. It's going to take a long time of development to make a game that you actually give a shit about for a I long not, time. I will not care about this game. <laughs> You're gonna have no. You're gonna have no choice because you're all your kids are gonna be playing it. All everyone's gonna be playing it. No one's gonna be playing anything else. No one's gonna be playing Fortnite anymore because everyone's just gonna be Oasis immersed in this shit. No, we'll all be dead because it'll be a hundred years later. <laughs> oh, you put me into defensive mode. I'm sorry. I just oh, I can't. Ads. That's why. It's, that's why. I can't. I see nothing positive about this game. It, it's got great. Pieces. Okay, wait. That's not true. You definitely see positive. You just don't. You just don't. Like you. You definitely can see what it's trying to do. Otherwise, you just don't. Otherwise, you, you don't. Otherwise, you haven't watched anything. I don't like their development. I think that they waste time on the physics of the, like you said, the jacket. That's awesome. Don't get me wrong. But no, it's not. Listen, you don't work on physics of a jacket. That's not what. That's not what it is. It's a platform, right? You build a. You build. It's a, it's something that that's going to drive the single player game. It's going to drive all the modes. You know, it's going to drive the persistent universe. These are all little platform tech that you could use throughout whatever you do, right? And, Mm -hmm. yeah, there's, you there, can't do any of that stuff. There's no game where I can take, I can steal someone's jacket or whatever, take a jacket. I can put it on, take it off. You can pick the fucking jacket off the floor and put it on. There's no game that does that. It forget about fun, like just forget about fun. That's it. But That's you, Star Citizen. But forget that, about fun. <laughs> But that is the point. That is the point. You're gonna create your own. That's that's exactly. That's like that's like. Uh, G Gary's mod, right? That's that's like goat simulator type fun, right? That's like stuff where you make up your own fun because there's so there's just so much flexibility in no, not physics, not physics. I'm talking about like 
I can <laughs> I can rip off a piece of the ship my ship and hit hit you with it you know like I can I can take I can pick up that trash can over there and I can throw it into your friggin ship engine and you blow your blows up before you take off like does it come, work like, right now no, it doesn't. Yes, you can you can shoot your engine, so it's 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 the same thing. Like if you're throwing it into a fan, it's again the physics base is gonna cause that thing to break shit. I'm just I'm just speculating. Filler mode. Rather than just try and hit create with it and deliver it in a, a state that we weren't happy with, just to spend the extra time, polish it up more, and deliver it to the hype that is built up for your favorite ship. We've been very... <laughs> Sorry. No, you're good. I, uh... <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right. Yes, I understand. Uh, yeah, that I understand. Very bad bets with the no, I understand the... Life. Point. One was, I, won't shave I understand what you're looking forward to when it all comes together, was, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. you can pick my favorite but it's not YouTube coming together. And, uh, I've been well, with it, that's it, what I okay, it is, it is coming together. It's just not coming together fast enough for you. You can't, you can't deny it's coming together because it's literally getting bigger and bigger and like it's more and more playable. It's more and more stable. Like there's more and more shit to do every release. No, no, it, you, you're 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 a little bit outdated too, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Here, go to. I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna pass. What are they talking about right now? Why is he got it? What is he doing? What is this? Whatever. Just pause that and open open this window. I showed you. I'll let you know when the, the keynote's on. Is the keynote gonna come on? Because it's three thirty, and this guy's like got a shirt out. He he, he literally just said they're filler right now because they're setting up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's what I just wanted to make sure because this is I don't know what that is. No, they're just this is just filler. I'll leave the audio on so I can I can hear it. But here, check out. Go to oh, open that video I sent you. Yeah, I'm doing it. And then go to one hour and Jesus. one hour and nineteen minutes and fifteen seconds. Fundamentally, it just has two more guns and a white paint job. There is that's about the difference between the two uh yeah but two more guns two more guns this guys uh, neither of them are snub ships Douche. they are fully fledged ships they have quantum drives they have space for a jump module so you can use it. Well, really yes. can to, well really can go to really go to 120 the ship. in the ship it looks beautiful in go to planet, 120 you forgive me, they got whole they got whole they in the vtech 4 the planet tech 4 they got sh they got mass they got planet shading Right, so whole mountains cast sh like shadows and stuff like that. So there's no degradation. This is a big difference between No Man's Sky. So look at one one minute, one hour, twenty minutes. That is all that detail is is straight through from as soon as you see the planet, like as soon as you come in to when you land. Like all the detail stays the same. There's no transitioning. Like there is a No Man's Sky. Okay, that's cool. Okay, and then go to. I'm just. Hold on, I'm watching the transitioning or uh, non transitioning. Oh, okay. Wait to get to the trees and stuff. It just looks so crisp. Looks so good. I'll be right there, Gray. Part of our new initiative, part of a part of the continuing refinement of the of the vehicle pipeline. Like 123. That's where I want you to go, actually. Like that in the in the past. One hour, 23 minutes. While yes, we certainly want. Ships like the Cutlass, or like okay. the Carrick, rather. He's flying over some right rocks, created, mountains. Uh, rather than push it, yeah. rather than you know rush it, rather than. They're starting to introduce the flora. You're right. They're starting to do the plants it's more important to and the trees and all the trees right. in the mountains. I don't know. It looks fantastic. Um. All right. Check this out. Yeah. So that, to me, like, okay. They're starting to introduce the flora and fauna. Why didn't they do that months ago? Rather than give me a. Uh, uh, the, uh, whatever. There already so, is. There already is in the last one. So. so much with their, with their community. I think it's because. Um, and the last thing I want to show you from the first part. It's got everything in the kitchen sink. There's in, trees. So it allows you to. Do a bit yeah. of All right. What? Well, I'm sorry. It's an alien planet, so I guess I can look different. Got a repair facility on board. So you can do a bit of repair. Uh, one hour thirty-five minutes. No, one hour. Antenna things that go. 
One hour, 35 and 10 seconds. Why don't I start at 135 and then, you That's know, fine. I can handle 10 seconds. There you go. Okay, I see the jacket stiffly hanging off. And, and don't get pissed because this, there, this is it's, it's a little shaky, all right? But just understand the concept of what's going on here, right? Okay, I understand the concept. Yes. Oh, wait. Phil! Phil Smallwood, audio director, you're in here somewhere. Let me do the for the carrot. We want revenge for that beard. Right? right. Yeah, he put it on. Richard, see that? Uh, when we were, when we were he put on a cloth body object. A so. The comments in the Twitch chat well, he didn't show him putting it on. He showed him from the first part of the deal. I want to see him put it on. Well, okay. But it's going to, I mean, it's going to happen because it's an MMO, right? I'm going to see you do that. Well, why don't they show that? Because it probably there's probably a lot of clipping right now. They probably don't want to show because that. Because it sucks. Oh because my it doesn't God. work. It oh doesn't my. work. The first time you build something, how many? <laughs> I don't build anything. I have people build things for me, and I expect. Quality. And apparently, and apparently, they have to do it perfect the first time. Yes, every time, or I'm not paying for it. <laughs> no, okay, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, I mean that's cool. I'm waiting for him to drop. Isn't he supposed to drop it again? And this war is kind of. Uh, Isn't that what you said, or no? That's what somebody said. I don't know where it is. I oh, that was the whole only thing. Part. Oh, okay. I'll let you know when I find it. Put them together, and when you put them together, if that's what the experience that we're trying to deliver on the PU, so Theatre War allows us to get it out there. Yes, cloth physics are great. I I think it's about time games have that. It's like Nvidia a few years ago was big on their Nvidia physics, where they put like flags and stuff moving in the game. You know. But you, know, but it's, you it's couldn't really interact with it. I mean, you could a little bit. Like, if you yeah, shoot through it, it would move there, and stuff like that. You know, but right. the PU and go So, the yeah, that's cool. I mean, that's a, that's cool technology, but I want to be able to play it and have fun. Then add the cool stuff. Which is why I think this new game mode is going to be kind of... Because really, what you're talking about is, I want to just shoot some shit. I want to have some fun. I want to, I want to do some gameplay, right? So I think that's what... And I, I think they understand that. I don't want to shoot anything. I, I want to be able to do what the game offers. Like it says, hey, you can go right. Well, you told me you could go mine. So you can go mine and make money right now. So you haven't okay. been you haven't been in the game since I, that's been in there. So since well, every time I try to go in the game, like, well, that's because you need a you need a twenty eighty to play the game. So I'm sorry. Uh, okay. right. Wait, I, well, I don't know. If, if you got shit to do, I can ping you when the keynote comes on. I don't think the keynote's ever coming on, honestly. I think that uh, <laughs> that they realize that, you know, he went up there and smashed the windows of his Tesla. And it <laughs> but that's the thing. These guys aren't scared of that. These guys these guys mess up all the time in life. Uh, I've seen, you know, the stuff where they're landing ships and the other ships, which was cool. Getting the, uh, the little cart out the back. I think that was last year. And, and Chris Som goes, yeah, Whoa, they here. need to and do Tom some work on there. And there's no audience. There's no audience at all. And Ian just walked up there, hmm. and he went on for what must have been six months. Wow, they need to do a trees. lot of work on their, uh, and the dude standing there out by his ship looking at the... Pine trees. Oh, you're on the other one. I'm not going to try to do my Ian Lee impression. Their, their models are but, uh, horrendous. Was, their people models are horrendous. Well, they're just, a lot of them don't have motion capture on them yet. Uh, if I'm allowed to have an opinion, uh, not only why can't we do hair right? Exceeds them quite what's, often. What's the problem with that? Because it takes a lot of processing. It takes a lot of GPU for that. Well, let's get on it. I mean, we I mean, I, 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 can, I can do hair. Dude, do you have a 2080? You don't have a <laughs> futuristic video card, okay? <laughs> you you got a 2080 and you're playing at 1080p. So shut up. <laughs> I always have the analogy like in the 90s you say oh Let's I see, see that yeah. mountain over there and you can't get to it because it's just a skybox yeah, all the like oceans are ice you get the games and you say oh yeah you can mm -hmm. go to that mountain now but Star Citizen's like yeah, yeah it makes it easier so they don't have to render water yeah you can go there and you can well, keep going and they were saying something about it's not all like it's not all ice the smallest it's, detail, oh, it's not the smallest, it's like you, know, you can go in though. like there's all the props, water you know Exploration. We have to find a way in. Mm. Scale, 
And you know, that's why it's a, a mind blowing. I mean, from my perspective, you know, on the design side, when I see all the art come on, it's just incredible to just get layered yeah. on top and it makes everything so much better. No. It's not just working at the scale. It's Does he want to play Fortnite? Like no, they are gay just map. playing Fortnite on the Xbox. I was actually, I, I came in I came in 24th and I came in like 18th yesterday. I played a couple matches. I was actually having some fun with that game. It just, I don't know why people hate it so much. It's because it's, it's, it's cause so many people like it. That's why, right? So it's got the M, people have the MP syndrome. Yeah, and then they say it's only for kids, but I don't know why they would think that. If I was a kid in high school right now, I'd be playing the hell out of that game. Did play Fortnite last night? Yeah, I whooped, I whooped his ass. <laughs> I'm kind of actually excited to play Sea of Thieves again. I was reading about it. They did a lot of work on it. Oh, yeah, I need to load that. I was going to load Ark, but I ran out of this space. Really? Yeah, it's 108 gigs. Oh, yeah, Dungeon Ball! That sounds bloke. <laughs> it is. I'm uninstalling it right now. Dude, the stream chat's going crazy. They just want the goddamn keynote. <laughs> They're having a... They had a, a Xeno linguistic presentation that they switched to for a half hour. Where they were just talking about building one of the the languages called Xion in the game or something. So they have legit people. Like it's like Lord of the Rings like level it's like Dothraki level, you know, language building. But everyone the attention spans are just ridiculous. Like none of them care. They're just like boring. Like there's so much That's the problem, right? And that's the mentality that I feel like you have. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Like you just don't care about cool shit. Like like you know next level game development. I don't want to see them talking about them making a language. Like, that's boring to me. Make but, your language, but, put it in the game, and then when you release the game, you'd be like, wow, they made a whole language in this the, game. That's so here's the problem. I, I'm i the problem then because they they can do that, right? And you, if you don't want to watch it, you just don't watch it. The problem is I keep saying, hey, check this out. <laughs> Dude, I've seen a lot of gaming keynotes. Right, like a lot of game con things, like Minecraft, World of Warcraft, um, the the one that's in Germany that um, can't think of their name. Anyways, this one is the most boring thing I've ever seen in my life. These guys are talking about crap that nobody cares about. Well, okay. Jesus Christ! I mean, they've been streaming all day. You know what I mean? It's not just this is not why people come. Like these are just no exactly they're supposed to do the keynote in fact this is better because you have to pay for all the crap that all the crap that blizzard has yeah only if you want to watch this boring crap this they just offer it for free so you you know that you don't want to see it because you it. right i'd like to see it at the beginning and then ignore the rest of the two days so if anyone's ripping you off it's activision I don't care about Activision ripping me off. They deliver games when I want them to come out. <laughs> oh, yeah? Is Diablo 4 yeah. out? Did Diablo no, 4 get announced last year? I don't care about Diablo 4. Not even a little bit. Like, I, I'm interested to play it. I'm interested to play it, but I'm not excited about it. It's like, it'll be at least two or three years away. And you know what Blizzard isn't doing? Showing all kinds of crap and boring us with stuff they're planning on doing. Yep. And meanwhile, the trust in them is going down, 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 down. That's only because of the Chinese. <laughs> okay, well, whatever the reason is, people don't like... Game developers, big de game developers, and no, normal game to processes. No, because they release something in beta and make you pay for it, and then it's uh, they're like, oh, here's an here's a expansion pack, or as we used to call them, expansion pack. Here's a uh, DLC. Yep. Wow, which is what Citizen is Star Citizen is doing. I forgot, I had to pay sixty bucks for a tech demo. That's right. Yeah, but you're never gonna pay anything again. And you get you get not only a single player game out of that, you get a multiplayer game, you get ongoing development and MMO support. I get, like you get I, all the I expansions. I guarantee by the time this game releases, I will have to buy something else. I guarantee it. There's no way. What do you mean you'll have to buy something? Oh. To no, dude, if you bought it, I don't know what package you bought, but maybe you didn't buy the single player package. Like, you might have to buy the single player package. Oh, there's that. single player packages. Well, I have it. I don't know where you're at. <laughs> I paid. I, don't know it. I bought into the whole thing for 20. Oh, here we go. You ready? Yes. 
I'm ready. I said, are you ready? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They'll be like, okay, we know the game's out. Citizen Star Citizen 4.0, but you got to pay twenty dollars to get the extra add-on content because you only have the ship content. All right, that sounds ready. Because they're gonna run out of money. There's no doubt about it. Ooh. If they haven't already. All right, here we go. It's happening. <laughs> No matter how much venom you spit, I'm still excited. <laughs> I I can't. I don't know why. I do not know why. Cause I'm I'm in for so I'm in it, dude. I'm in for something different. I I I like the fact that I I'm already paid for this game, and no matter what they deliver, like they're never gonna sell me an expansion pack, right? They're just gonna sell. They're just gonna keep making developing shit. Dude, the only thing you paid for was giving Chris his extra chin there. That's what you did. <laughs> Uh, he's eating some good food. <laughs> he does look like he's slowly slouching more and more every year. <laughs> he's defeated. He's stressed out. He's stress eating. Yeah, well, watch how much it, watch how much he interrupts people. Like <laughs> he's definitely a control guy. <laughs> to see, uh, I'll totally give you that. He's it's he's. I bet you he's a pain in the ass to work for. So hopefully you guys got to see some of that. And the marketplace was great. You guys are always great. Uh, and um, well, this is the end. Uh, so hopefully we've got something special to the end for you guys. Uh, so year, he's gonna he's gonna blow you away right now. Uh, no. sort of you're gonna you're gonna drop a grand on one of the big uh, carriers by the end of this. I would love I would love that. I would love to be that excited and be that satisfied with this game to be like, yeah, I'm gonna buy a thousand dollar carrier because this game is awesome. <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> But, you know, since then, uh, we delivered the... OTS All right, what's this? Last 13 months of core feature delivery. Made a big difference on the client performance. Uh, Object container streaming, alpha 3.4. So, so we um, oh, he's giving you exactly what you asked for, Matt. Planet Tech what, what they've done? He's, no, he's going to tell you exactly what they're going to do. Dude, I love. I actually really like how unprofessional this this is. Like, <laughs> there's something endearing. I'm telling you, there's something endearing about how much they mess up. Like, they're just a bunch of guys trying to make a video game, and they're putting together a con no. to show people. Yeah, these are not. These are not guys. They are, dude. CEOs. You saw a little bit of that in Alpha 3.7. Quality of life, staggered development. Move the team. Ship rentals. Yeah, I remember you telling me about that. Patches every three months. Okay, so what's next? They're uh, big man. Their features of their content that we're going to whatever patch they're sort of designated for. You want to, you want to switch over to watch the Alex trailer again? Good work and iterate and yeah, that looks better to me than this so far. Working on aspects, um, I would get, I, and I am. I'm giving Steam a thousand dollars. I was just going to say. <laughs> like, here you go. <laughs> Dude, you know, if, I'm going to be so pissed if you get that because then I'm going to have to get it. My Oculus is, I'm just going to throw my Oculus away. I don't care if it's 30 minutes long. I'm getting it. <laughs> One of the comments in that says, wow, he let himself go. <laughs> I did see a scroll up that said thick. So that's what they were talking about. I'm, you know what? Reserve some time because you really need to come in the game with me. You need to you need to experience. I have a two-player ship, right? I got one that we can both drive in, so... That was the other thing. When we did try the ship time thing last time, there was nothing for me to do. When you put it in flight mode, it, like, locks me into my chair. Like, it's not like I can walk around the ship and, like, craft or something. Well, certain ships you can't walk around because it's just... It's just... Wait, every ship you can get up. Well, okay, no. No, the one with the spinning thing that, like... Oh, yeah, you can get up in that. I, no. Nope. We tried. Not the second player can't. As you get into the demo, uh, assuming it doesn't crash, which, you know, you never know. Uh, <laughs> uh, He's so afraid it's going to crash. So the, so it's the first iteration of the server side Shouldn't be afraid. Should be so natural. Have, uh, <laughs> server Stop. persistence in the session of the server. So the server, whenever it, uh, you know, it leaves an area, it streams Cray, don't hit. I'll be down in a minute. Of all the <laughs> He's like, Dad, play with me. Boom. It doesn't persist yeah. beyond the server session. The bigger thing, which we've talked about in the future, is sort of the icon. You know what's fun? Because every, sorry, 60, no, 80% of the people that are just spamming this chat right now are just, just I don't know, it's uh, not 
on this main screen here. Uh, I've got a black screen here and a black screen here. Anyway, so I'll talk about persistence. Can't even get the so, crap to work. Uh, <laughs> this is what I love, dude. Uh, everything just like, you can count on everything just breaking. <laughs> is, is, is I don't know why that's like, oh, it's man. to me. Because it's entertaining. It's entertainment. I don't know. Is going to allow us to, well, to me, that's like, what, what did I pay you 60 bucks for? That has nothing to do with the game. It has to do with whatever the place they're... Yeah, we'll see. All right, here we go. Up next. So... They're, they're going to get saved off to the platform, and so when a new release comes, we can re-entitle it back to the account the same way we do for everything that you do. And the, the plan with that is to not have to wait. Oh, talking about between, purchases, uh, yeah, gotta make some more money. No, they're talking about you're oh, not going to lose your money now. Potentially, they're start going to start saving the actual player the next, progress. And yeah, we do reserve the right. So your like credits and stuff. Or a major rebalance, or we have to redo the database on a, a major release, then. At that particular time, we may have to wipe it, but in general, the goal is to let you guys make money in the game, earn things, collect things, and not have it wiped every time we do it. Persistence is a, was a big thing. Okay. So, so, we're, and, and so we're aiming to ship that. With, that will hopefully be, that should be with the 3.8 patch cycle. Uh, and now, uh, Planet Tech V4, which we obviously sort of unveiled at the beginning and there was some really cool panels about it during the day uh, which I think is gonna I mean just the quality of oh the, I mean not just micro that that is that what the they're talking about the like platform AMR persistence yeah like your your character your money your yeah, I don't know well, I, see, I see they got it at the end of his uh, timeline there, so. oh no no this is just this is all 3.8 is the social group gameplay, but that is a focus for us to make sure. Which is next? That's the next, next, next release. Group gameplay. gameplay stuff works well. It's important for us to get Last stuff working. For, you know, as, as Stop it! For the fit as well, but Ooh, laying down the law. Playing, grouping up with your friends in the universe, doing stuff, uh, and so that is a focus, and you'll see us iterating on that uh, for three eight, uh, three nine, and onwards. Did they beat uh, on each other? <laughs> more robust they? So we've got. Uh, I used to beat on my brother. Up in three eight. That uh, you know is interesting. There's you know we're starting to introduce AI into some of the missions, yeah. Well, you're like, say, bugging him. Stop it. The hostage on the 890, which we had in an ATV. We were showing very early more robust of it, missions. Uh, uh, that will be in 3A, and there'll be some other ones along that line uh, of missions, and that's multi-part missions. Which also what we're showing is sort of an early version of a multi-part mission. What we showed at the beginning, and we're going to end with here uh, that 39. Four zero onwards. Uh, then, uh, sometime uh, around about middle of this year, I think. Uh, so, full universe persistence, and that is the persistence that allows us to save everything. Period. So you can take your coffee mug that you've got in the carrot. This is a big deal, and dude. Explore on a planet and drop it in a forest. Get back on your carrot. Fly away. And someone else could go to that forest and see this. That, that is a big fucking deal. It. Uh, and so the, the, the and that, that, that iterates to every. You know that, right? Uh, yeah, it says uh, in every, the future. Every that'll dynamic be coming out. <laughs> That's a big deal. That's like, okay, we're making our own base. We're going to put all our crap here <laughs> in this remote area. Like that's what that that's the that's the kind of gameplay that involves. Stack a thousand turtles in a place. So obviously we'll we'll have we'll have some policies on the items. So at some point when we're saving to the database, we'll say, well, this is a low importance item. There's too many in this area. Uh, so therefore, and this one's been around too long. So we just won't bother saving that to the database. And then you'll just sort of be like, oh, you know, someone came along while you weren't there. Uh huh. Took the turtle or so they can't see everything. Uh, but in general, no, they uh, can. They're just saying if someone asshole comes along and like stocks so up one thing that gives us 50 turtles in one area or 5,000 turtles in one area to go around the universe and ultimately, you know, you want to why can't I have 5,000 turtles if I want. create your own homestead? You should be able to settle down. Well, you can. They're just saying if it's just we'll if it's just sitting there with no action, no activity, come back to it, they might do something with it. Uh, hashtag save uh, the turtles so is already the in the chat. Save the turtles. 
We're going to have dynamic resources. No turtle stacking confirmed. So they'll be finite, so there'll be only so much. I, I, oh, God. It's kind of exciting not having an inventory, meaning there's no just stack shit. It's just, it's not just a number. They're actual physical things. Like, that's a big deal, too, dude. If you think about it, every game in the whole history of games has cheated. <laughs> <laughs> right? They've cheated. With the exception of... No, well, no, even Minecraft, right? Because Minecraft goes into a box, and it's that's cheat. Like, then it becomes just a number in a box. Right? So... That one game, that island game... That, that we played a couple times. By the full you could leave stuff on the ground. Like I said, the full persistence of all items, ships, characters, and also whatever it's called. I tried resources. to play it again, but it's terrible. Why um, lands? Whatever. And then the last thing. Oh yeah. Uh, which uh, we won't, I think, get to by the end of next year, but we'll be very close to it. Is server meshing, and so everything we've been doing up until then, and that's when I think everything fully comes alive, is the server meshing allows us to have a lot more players in the no same area. Sky, the, the work that we've done on the uh, kind of server-side OCS where you can change the point of view of the server arbitrarily anywhere around uh, and save off state is... is the, di the difference is I have a storage room. I'm throwing stuff in my storage room. Like actual objects. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so you go in there, it's a mess, you open the door, everything falls out, and you have to weed through it to find what you need. <laughs> you can do that in Skyrim, but it's not multiplayer. So. Yeah, I guess you can. And the bank calling and the full persistence and enables server meshing. So that's the next thing. Once we're uh, that's not really. I mean, that's we're cool, actually already starting to work on it's not the a network side of what we use server meshing right now. Other games but, do. But um, we're really excited about that because then that's going to allow a sort of dynamic, seamless uh, universe that won't have the same player. But uh, I guess the difference is like I can take something out of your hand. You know what I mean? Like you pick up something, I could take it from you. We'll be able to do, but hey, we're going to start experimenting with some down, player counts in the future and maybe upping it because at the end of the day if we're not simulating the whole system and it's a smaller subset of that we'll be able to have more players so so we'll see in the midterm if we get more players into a server right now but longer term server meshing is what's going to allow us to really have a fully dynamic universe okay uh, and then on the smaller things that we're going to be working Thank on you, is Boomer. obviously you know, I've talked about the quality of life. It's an ongoing uh, effort for us. You're only starting to see the very, very beginnings of it. Uh, so we have some dedicated Server teams meshing, just focused okay. on the quality of life. We have a ve what we call the vehicle experience team that we're working on things to improve how it feels operating and and running a vehicle. Uh, I mentioned that there was a couple. Matt proofing of it. That's what that's what that it's called. Matt yeah, proofing in, it. In the opening, but there's yeah. a lot more stuff to come. Also in terms of you know, you're gonna have to work harder. And all the rest of stuff. You know what? Uh, they're up for it. They're up for that challenge. I don't know, man. Chris looks like he's just ate a Thanksgiving dinner and he's going to take a nap for about four years. More content, bigger universe. Okay, so they're not announcing any major... They're adding content, which they need to, which is good. I'm sick of them not having any content. And missions and stuff to do. More loops, yeah. More content and then more gameplay loops. The gameplay loops being the mining loop, right? You mine stuff, you can go get it, which gives you stuff to buy stuff to go mine, like that kind of thing. What they really need to do is uh, make the characters not feel like you're running in Jello. Technical difficulties again? Oh, okay. Wow. What is this? It'll recap. They're just recapping the first part. Looks like they turned the graphics down a little bit. It does. It looks like they have like a whitewash over it. Yeah. I think they're actually, honestly, I think they're streaming that to the screen because they that aired earlier. 
Yeah, nice frames per second, guys. Yeah. Minus 20 <laughs> frames per second. <laughs> 10 frames a minute. Look, come on. Look out that window. Look out the window. Look out the window. That's so dumb. I'm waiting for him to look out the window. Oh, you missed it, then. Shit. I don't know where you are. I'm watching this white ship hover above a bunch of uh, <coughs> trees that keep popping into existence. Oh, yeah. that stinks. They didn't fix pop. the pop up right. either. And by the way, well, Glenn is, uh, actually on this is not released functionality yeah. either. It never will be released <laughs> functionality. <laughs> I'm going to ignore you for the rest of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some major pop in, so look at that. Come on. Sure. Well, sure, dude. The landscape yeah. is changing. It's not even just pop ins. Watch. Wait, what landscape? Watch. The, he's flying above the mountains. Watch it. Keep looking at the ground. Don't look at the ship. I mean, no rocks are moving, if that's what you mean. Uh, I saw some rocks pop in. And here's one of the things that, they, you know, I think. Look, at, look at the smooth animations on that ship. So we want to yeah, the animations so the, are great on the know, ship. So this ship goes into another ship, we see? That's great. That looks great. The ships are great. Their world art style is terrible. They need a better artist. The ships are fantastic. They're the best ships I've ever seen. I've never seen ships look that good in the game. From a design standpoint, you know, this allows oh my god, they look beautiful on mine. Build these in a modular way so that we can no, this, is, this is an AI ship, first of all. This is a, this is a shuttle associated with it. On, the, on the surface. From there, you know, they oh, it's not something you can drive. Well, the ship is, but this particular ship is AI-driven. It's just like a cab. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and, and as I mentioned earlier, this is sort of a... Yeah, that looks great. ...first version of a sort of multi-part mission... Uh, that we've discussed and yeah. thinking about doing. Uh, in God, why do the characters move so <laughs> slow? I don't understand. <laughs> I actually have a big problem with that. I'll, I'll absolutely give that to you. And the, when they demo it, they never run. <laughs> no. Dude, we don't move that slow in real life. Like, I, I think the goal is to, I think the goal is to, you know, give the, like, oh, like stop and smell the roses type thing. You know, like look at the, look at the stuff. But I don't, I don't really know. They fix the buttons too. Watch this. They're with the oh, next the next release. I don't know if you remember, but they had like the shitty hover over things. So you'll see yeah, you had to zoom in on it, and then you had like you know, odd, awkward control. Yeah, see, you could just it, it. The actual buttons are in game, right? They're just so. So you press the one you want. I feel like Chris is really nervous, like something is going to go wrong. <laughs> did, you, did you see the reflections through the glass there? Yeah. The distortion? Yeah. So one other thing, which we're going to get into a little further, but if we actually take a look outside. Um, oh, nice so, pop in. Uh, You're 100% right on the character, so it's very distracting. Uh, that's cool. Right? Like, they need a better... Look at that. That's dope. Can you look out the window a little bit, Glenn? Yeah, see? He knows what, the, he knows what sells. Glenn, turn your ass around. Glenn. Can you look up Glenn. <laughs> He's like the boss is talking to you. So if you take a look, if we go I'm watching him go here, through the second door. Where the trees go oh. You're behind them. Shit. You haven't gotten to the He's window looking. yet? Yeah, so you can He's see. looking out the window right now. Yeah, okay. So, the snow blowing right, and stuff. On. That's cool. So there's a storm blowing in right now. Come to that in a, a oh, I didn't, sh but, uh, I didn't show the weather effects on the ships, the, the windshields of the ships and shit like that. Uh, That's all dynamically uh, driven. Uh, that was in the first part. The wind, okay, cool. Uh, Weather's cool. I like weather yeah, in my right? games. And it, and it's no storms and things. So but it's nothing new. Not going to have, we've got a couple elements still to come on the fully, fully dynamic planetary weather. Uh, which would be volumetric uh, planetary crowds and uh, volumetric ground. Oh, that sounds like stuff that your graphic card can't handle. Pieces in place, uh, for our weather That's probably why you don't like the game. Is you probably Dude, just my, got, my, it's probably just blocks right like now for you. Five, five frames a second slower than yours. That's <laughs> <what I'm saying. laughs> in your in in your world, that matters. <laughs> 
and, and I'm playing in uh, 1440 resolution, and you're still in 1080p. So it, it says it in the demo. <laughs> I told my wife to get one for Christmas. In, uh, you did see I did see, uh, I did see somebody use a 5K monitor to play Fortnite. It looked fantastic, like it's sharp. Really? Yeah. But they said the 4K didn't look as good. So I'd say in two years we'll be having 8K monitors on our desks. Oh look, it's an IT center, server core. And the idea with these kind of missions in the longer term is to you know, have the ability to do like stealth gameplay instead exactly. of combat gameplay, so uh, solve some puzzles, yes. so it's not just going to be about shooting people all the time. Well, uh, and, and it's something that... Why? That's what Matt wants. Matt just wants to shoot people. Combat, which is basically breadcrumbs <laughs> as well, so it opens up to other aspects. No, I don't want to shoot people. So want I want to play a game that makes me feel like I'm in the game and having fun and, and I'm part of the end universe. simulation that Tony was showing earlier. Plus some more crafted, multi-stage, kind of more narrative missions. Oh, this, oh nice servers are cool. They're little sort of nice flavor and robotic tape too. arms moving around, I guess, is what those are supposed to be. Oh, you could appreciate that. <laughs> well, it's not game-changing. Anybody can do that. EA can do that. EA can do that. This is, this, I know, this is all pretty stand. I wonder what they're gonna, what they're up to here. Great. Gonna go in the vent. Okay, open to that. Oh, it's an actual object. Not, not uncommon. It's been in games before. <laughs> That's gonna be your job. That's your, that's your, that's your, they haven't revolutionized anything. Okay, stop it. I'll get, there's a lot of games that do all this stuff. Now, what would be cool is if he could put the object back. I'd like to see him put that grate back. On. You at, okay? They already have that in place. That's already that's already that. It'll but, snap back into place where it's I, supposed to go? I, I don't know about the grate, but they already have objects that do that. Like, you could take it off, and then you'd throw them around or whatever, give them to other people, but then put them back in place, yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, then, you know, again, there was things like we took the... Uh, Glenn's going to take his uh, four. The, I wish they would work on their animations. God. Everything's so and, stiff. Uh, we can pretend we're going to pour them off. I can't. He's oh, gonna kick that grate over. Yeah, the idea He's gonna shoot like it. The, the FPS like the, the modes, He's gonna weld it. He's welding it. He's cutting it. Yeah. Could be welding, repairing. In this particular He's got a little plasma cutter. Four, um, kind of hinges locks off so we can take the grate open and get through it. Okay, he's blasting off the locks. He's, no, he's he's, he's cutting through the locks. Again, yeah, this is, you know, I think we've but look how they just about, watch. Like there's a big yeah, chunk, and then he cuts through it, and then now there's no chunks there, not even on the grate or on the side. It's gone. Like the physical inventory, taking the oh, it's on the fine. ground. It, it's on the ground. It's fine. I'm just saying. Uh, an outfit that will keep me warm, or, Correct. or you know, protect me from fire. Okay. And, I mean, I think would, even with our combat and everything, right, put it we back. want people to actually think about what they need to do and weld it back into place. Okay, I see it. Oh, that's cool. Oh, we dropped it. Uh, okay, this guy, I'll admit, this guy's a terrible demoer. <laughs> Are you for the exit? No, he's looking at it. Turn that off. No, no, no. It's on the bottom here. Go down here. Set. See that square? Move your cursor down. He'll get fired. <laughs> he probably will, too. The mouse isn't working? Yeah. Oh. Hi. He's got a glitch and uh, he can't see his, uh, right, his cursor. That can't be right, right? Come out, do that, that's all right. There we go. Okay, well done. <laughs> so, Workarounds. The, the, mm -hmm. the, you know, the, as you guys know, there's an inventory that's a personal yeah. assault system, yeah. which is... Uh, yeah, well. Richard, it's a personal line of thought with 3 8 or 3 9? 3 9. So, yeah, that's sort of working for us. But the 
Personally, the thought is the 3 9 which allows you to access a whole bunch of. Glenn's kind of funny. They got Glenn's face as a main. I don't know. I'll watch that. The internet's a wonderful place. It's, you're right, it's horrible, but. Come on, dude! Okay, so he, he broke into the server room. Like, why is he so... He's trying to sneak, isn't he? Is that water cold? Yeah, it looks like it. And by the way, one of the reasons... Yeah, it kind of looks like there's water on there. One of the reasons, obviously, why Microtech... They like... Watch their shadow. ...and being told is to... ...cool all their... ...you know, the server farms. The server farms, yeah. It's like a big Microsoft. All right, let's uh, try to get some data. Oh, you can drag placement now. That's cool. And again, this is building block UI, right? Now pull it out. That's all put together by a In the middle of the data copy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I gotta believe. Oh, well, I don't know. I don't gotta believe. That's why I like your point of view. You're like, <laughs> how do we break it? <laughs> yeah. Will the game let us break it? Yeah. And I think you're right. I think the more that a game does and isn't scared to break, I think the better. <sighs> okay. Show us something here. Oh, another game you can try is um, once you get the VR headset is Elite Dangerous. Yeah. It was friggin' fantastic. Well, okay, No Man's Sky, I guess, too. I didn't, didn't think about that. Yeah. I mean, I know you only have love for Valve, but... <laughs> well, it doesn't come out till March. You're blending in. Taking a day off work for that. I'll probably get sick. You better get your headset ahead of time. I will. <laughs> hey. I'll, pr I'll probably go to order it and it'll be out of stock. That'll be my luck. I think there's only three left. Uh, for, for right now. I ain't gonna get one though. So the whole point here is to show multi-part missions. Uh -huh. Can you use that as a shield if somebody starts shooting you? I mean, everything is persistent in the world, so... I love how the crowd's like all laughing. <laughs> you know, put it on top of his... okay. Well, this has been eventful. Um, <laughs> I gotta take the boys down to Nana's and go watch some football, I think. All right. Better get out of here, Glenn. But, uh, yeah. I'll, I mean, let, I'll uh, let you know. I'll let you know how it finishes. Yeah, we can have a we can have a post mortem follow up and uh, talk about the things you found out, and then I'll bash them. Okay, okay, let's do. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Enjoy. Yeah. So, uh, 
good. We have non-lethal takedowns now. Yeah, let's get out. Yeah, it's part of that. So melee combat does ship yeah. with 3.8, yeah. and it's a lot more than just that. But it's non-lethal takedowns. You'll be able to fight. To, to knock people out. Knock people out. Um, get into uh, fisticuffs. Cuffs. There's a whole sort of different levels of punch, left, right, block, left, right. It's all actually physically based. Uh, so we've grabbed something kind of warm, but we're not really ready to it. We've actually stashed uh, a getaway yeah. environment suit. And Richard, uh, Trier, I want to bring up to the stage. So Richard's uh, the lead designer on our actor feature team. And I'd like him to talk a little about what is happening right here. And the beginning of the actor status system that will ship in 3.9. So what you're seeing here is basically an extension of the room system. And the room system contains temperature, wind speed, humidity, and it basically amalgamates all of that into what you're seeing on the HUD at the moment, which is the apparent temperature. So the apparent temperature actually comes in and is part of our player status system. And the player status system is where you start to feel these environments and the actual environments start to play into the gameplay. So you can wow. see here that actually the physicalized wind is actually... I feel like I'm in a third-person adventure game. Up ...to try and shield himself, but he's not wearing the correct attire. So he's not wearing the correct equipment because he's just basically grabs the clothes and jumps outside. And as you can see, it's really cold. So he's starting to shiver. A uh, bottom side here, it is. Yeah, it's like minus, uh, minus 120 degrees Celsius. So obviously, you can only survive at like at least two, three minutes in that temperature. So he's actually starting to undergo hypothermia. I'd put my hands in my pockets, man. Jesus, not in front of me. Hypothermia actually ties into the gameplay. So his heart starts to raise. Stamina starts to decrease. He starts to actually physically start to see his, the, the, you'll see a whiteout. So he starts to become more sensitive to the light. And his audio will start to come in as well. To actually really sell that your body is shutting down. And the player status system really just incorporates multiple different things. So hypothermia is part of the temperature gameplay. And you're seeing the cold aspect here. But eventually that will be for heat as well as other actor status as well. Poison. You see here, starting to see the other value on here that you see is the apparent temperature, but the other value is the body temperature. Now, the body temperature is tracking your internal body. So, and I think it's, what is it down by now? It's like yeah. down at like minus, no, 33 we, degrees We forgot Celsius. to put the drop shadow on the, yeah. the thing. And so we're not in this suit. We actually have a suit that we've stashed in the cave, which we're looking for. The other thing uh, that you may have noticed if when Glenn was going to the third person view, uh, but we have, uh, we're working on environmental shader effects. So there is actually, there was snow accumulation on the jacket that you wore. You notice if you go back and That's cool. what it was. I like that a lot. And what it is now. Get in the cave! Get in! Is meant to be for things like snow, that was rain, close. dust, dirt, uh, and that's something that we're... Let me pop the volume back up now that three nine. And he's not going to... The, the biome, the, the basically your environment. So yes. And yeah. it'll build up over time. Fill up. So we better get a warm suit on because otherwise we're going to essentially pass out and then So die. this suit is actually cold, so hopefully <laughs> when Glenn puts it on, you'll see actually that the, it's actually frosted. So you can see Axe is actually shivering here as he's putting it on. And this suit is, is more as the Caldera suit that we revealed in the character archetype tour. And this is a, an environment suit that's built for these extreme climates. He's really cold. That's He's cool. Really cold. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll see the visors frosted up. You can see. And it'll this is like yeah. getting into your car when it's frozen. It's, it's frozen. And you've, the visor's actually frosted up. Your suit's frosted up. And as your suit kicks in, <laughs> this suit has an operating range that can actually survive these temperatures. That's yeah, fun with the with yeah, the foil. And, and you'll see it now because the same effects that we saw on the windshield, you definitely see yeah. in so uh, like your car. So visor. You, you're going to see because it's a big snow winter storm, snow slush that's going to that's warm in here as it's going out there. Yeah, I got the. It's going to start to get slush, and what we're going to see <laughs> is uh, less uh, is tough. And then I think the other person that I'd like to bring up is Mike Snowden, who is the director of our visual effects, and his team is being responsible for all the environmental weather effects here. And this yeah. is what we're doing on the snow side, but it the same could work in, you know, a desert planet for dust, rain, 
and we've actually prototyped a lot of this stuff outside snow, but you're seeing the snow has been our, uh, thing, uh, our first example. So That's I don't know if you want right. to talk about some of the stuff. Yeah, I mean, so this is all, the, the main thing about these effects is they're completely uh, data-driven. So we put a lot of time into creating these rule sets. The, the way that we author the effects is completely different to anything we've done before, because we know that we can make beautiful looking storm effects, but the really cool thing about this, no pun intended, is that it, it's literally the data that the planet gives us, so this ties in with the Planet Tech V4, yeah. which obviously we're, we're showing off today. Uh, it ties in with all the active state stuff, so it's like bringing everything together. So it, it, they look fantastic, but they're completely driven by what the game data is. Yeah, the temperature, altitude, humidity, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and so it's systemic and it's yeah. I mean, and, and it'll be affected by time of day. And this does look stuff. good. Yeah, I mean, this does look sets are things like crazy good. Even elevation, wind strength, wind direction, even angle. There's a lot of complexity in the rule set that makes it really easy actually for us in the long term to, to make yeah. the effects across all the kind of hundreds of planets that will eventually. Yeah, exactly. Be. And you know, obviously you can see the effects of the winds on the vegetation. Yeah. yeah. And as you see, God, I can't wait to I can't wait to the, the release where I can shove it in his face. He's gonna play the shit out of this game. I know it. Whenever it's done. But I do like his point of view. Keeps me honest. So looking for right now. One of the things before we go on too far, the other thing is with the armors. God, that looks so good. Like the little the little spaces in between so you can see stuff. Like it looks so good. Like it, to be able to, you know, go in there and that's that's something you don't see. Like usually it's just a constant, yeah, so constant storm. This is actually volumetric. volumetric. And buy different armor and store it. Okay, so here's our rover, uh, which we hidden with the little top, and uh, this is gonna pull it off. Pull it off. He's gonna pull it off. Watch. Larger example of the cloth interaction yeah. system. So, all right, Glenn, let's get the top off and get into the rover. Pull it off, back up. Fucking love it. Okay, we, we can drop it now. <laughs> that's dope. And again, that's an example of all the physics stuff coming together, the cloth interacting, the wind blowing it. Uh, the wind itself here, uh, one thing I wanted to call out is that the wind is different strengths depending on where you are. So if you're down in the tree line or in the troughs, the wind is actually is a lot slower. <laughs> it's it's so good. Cold. Look at the snow on his friggin... It really is a, a dynamic, dynamic environment. And as you see, as we get into here now, the temperatures come up, the water the water's oh. evaporating from our visor and we have a clearer view. Mm -hmm. But of course, the outside of the... the the rover now will have the effect on its canopy. Yep. All right, let's let let's let um, Sam know that she needs to pick us up. After we've engaged the system again. This isn't going to work under the go-to setup. So the go-to is break the. I'm gonna need a pickup. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> oh, hello. Yeah, I'm gonna need a pickup down the bottom of the hill. On my way. Okay. Okay, we got it. We actually the, the that breaks in our system because we we have a little background well, it's zoom to the right place, which doesn't doesn't actually do the server it hasn't streamed check yet. right, so it hasn't streamed, and it's, it's actually, you are seeing some of the stuff because this is in server OCS, so we don't have everything all the time now, so when things go in and out, we still got edge cases, and that's one of the issues that we're, we have to fix before server OCS happens, but it'll be fine. But also, this is precarious, so make sure you get a little yeah. noisy for Glenn. Oh, yeah, 
I feel like I feel like stuff is starting to come together. Like as we're further down, it's not quite as thick. The the the, uh, the weather is not quite as intense. I I know he's scaring the shit out of me. <laughs> he's scaring the shit out of me. <laughs> hey, we're we're with you. There we go. <laughs> oh, he let I thought. Pick me up. This is fun. This is kind of a fun demo. I was getting worried at the beginning of the demo because I was like just interior sneaking. Well, that's one way to sell a ship, the Carrick. Yeah. I remember when it was almost impossible to get a rover yeah. into a ship, but now we can do it. It's yeah. great. That's cool. Snow on the outside. It's good. It's still there. So we're talking about storage. Uh, so these are actually meant to be for suit storage. Still kind of early days on the stuff, so it's a bit wonky, but we put our suit in there. We need it. So the idea is that you would have suits and stuff that you would store depending on what you would need uh, on different planets. Awesome. shooting us from behind. Yeah, I got a pretty hefty crime stat. We're gonna have to get out of here. We're being tailed. Get to the turret. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was hoping that wasn't the end of it. iteration of ship AI in atmosphere. in atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. So we are being tailed by Microtech security because they figured out that we've stolen the data and we're making a getaway. Wow, that's going to be that's a long way to travel for that turret. <laughs> Jesus, that looks <laughs> Come on, dude. Okay, come on, 
I feel like the two, I feel like they I feel like there should be I feel like there should be more like do, 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 like on the guns on the turrets. It feels like too like I feel like it needs a little more punch. Is that the last one? Yeah, you can actually see a snowstorm in the distance there in the background as we're leaving. That was where we came from. Oh, that's cool. Okay, come on, Glenn. No pressure. <laughs> Go take him out. Get him, Glenn! <laughs> this is so awkward. There you go. Yeah, get it! Get it! <laughs> so why don't we get out of here, Sam? That's funny. God, that's good looking. Uh, we get it later. Okay. Get out of orbit then. <laughs> it's kinda, when we run these run throughs, it did not take. That was the no, longest uh, it's taken. Yeah. I, I, it was, uh, <laughs> well, naturally. The real crime was his aim. That's fun. This is a long demo. Those are trees down there, those dots. Cool. Thanks, man. So is, uh, okay, so now we're going to QT, right? Okay, let's get it. Let's get going. She's having trouble with the HUD. With the what? She's having trouble with the HUD. Oh, okay. Oh, you're back, Tom. How'd your stream go? Get up. You missed, <laughs> you missed my pessimistic friend. Come on. Yeah. He spent like an hour bashing how to defend Star Citizen. <laughs> the, the cloth simulation thing? Oh my god, I just, I flipped out. I loved it. I think you're right. I think there's going to be one more big twist. Because he keeps asking about that mission updating. Oh, bummer. <laughs> he's such a, dude, I don't, he's, he's, just, he's crazy. It's fun going at it. It's fun showing him stuff because eventually at one point there's going to be like a, 
Oh, I get it. Because it's right up his alley. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I think he does care. He just... <laughs> exactly. I think you're right, though. I think there's going to be one, right. one more big thing. Dude, uh, that weather stuff was awesome. The volumetric light, like the volumetric clouds, the volumetric basically weather like you could see stuff like it wasn't just like a consistent like you know snowfall like you could actually see it was I don't know it looks so good one thing I wanted to see if 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 footprints were left in the sand I'll call the twist oh through it see see the planet or a couple planets up close and then cut right and then they're done you're right Delivered to ruin station. There you go. So I thought, yeah, I thought we had the update of the mission. I guess we just missed yeah. it. Anyway, we got, we got, we got the data. We've now told where we got to go. We got to get a ruin station in. There we go. So here we go. Go, go exterior, guys. Exterior. There you go. Show it up. There you go. That's cool. This music's very interstellary. And this is in the uh, volumetric cloud, the yes. space cloud tech that we have. Same stuff that we're using for Squadron 42 for the coil, but as uh, as you can see, use of, usable everywhere else. It's completely volumetric lit in. God, that's yeah, gorgeous. So we're at the jump point um, to uh, the pyro system. Now, you don't necessarily need infrastructure for jump points, but the more traveled ones are the ones that used to be traveled, which pyro used to be, but not. We're going to see pyro. Have uh, what we call jump rings around them, and they help stabilize the jump point to make for a smoother jump. If you don't have one, then it's more difficult. <laughs> Dude, you, you not only called it, you absolutely nailed it. You may want like to try uh, a sort of side jump point to get into a system like if you're a smuggler because the main ones would be more uh you know essentially jump point doesn't need hardware like it's not necessarily going through a port. Port or it, 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 it is basically a port so when we're building the solar system one of the things that we think about it are entrances for um obviously economy reasons and you saw that with tony z's talk of the way to interject new things into the solar system um so around uh, around the stanton jump points the three major ones uh, we will have uh, space stations, you know, so that you can go and travel and let's say you had a long jump point and you want to stop and stop and uh, basically drop something off there. Or can. refuel. Or, or refuel yeah, exactly. or do whatever you need to do. Um, so th we will have space stations around those jump points that you can go and interact with. Now, obviously, when you go into a little bit more lawless system, uh, I don't want to say like building a wall. <laughs> really excited for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, in the case of Pyro, it used to be... He's uh, like, no politics. Don't bring politics into this. That, that once they strip mined it out, no one goes there anymore, and it's fallen uh, sort of into a lawless state. Yes. And uh, so this is not really a well... This isn't a very tr often traveled... Uh, you know what gets me more excited? I just watched the season four Expanse trailer to to with the jump gates. <laughs> this is why this is extra exciting. The uh, jump ring, which is de delineating where the point is, and uh, Sam is going to line itself up um, for us to jump to Pyro system. Uh, made it halfway through the first yeah, one, essentially sort of and then life happened. <laughs> you occasionally would, you know, you kind of I started after I watched the show. Places would have bigger stations, uh, but 
as I said, the pyro. Is it James S. Corey? It's Corey S. James. James S. Corey, right? But also with this, I guess with the cloud tech, you see the possibilities of us going in and mining that, um, and then it f affecting your radar. It's being booby traps. All these kind of gameplay. Wow, there's nine of them. I didn't know there was nine of them. I thought there was like seven. Up, um, with these unique points of interest. Look at that. Go, go, go. So how do you initialize it? Yes, I think we should go. Yeah, we should go. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, I, I did know those two people. I actually looked that up after <laughs> those two first names. <laughs> that's so cool. Oh, it's got the distortion too. Oh man, that's awesome. That's a little messed up. Oh, maybe that's not distortion. Maybe it's just a bug. No, it's definitely supposed to be that distortion. Yeah, okay. That's cool. That's actually a super cool view. That one. Oh, yeah. I can't get that at least. That looks awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that looks sick. I like the orange. That's cool. Oh! <laughs> That's cool. Well, that's different. I didn't know they're going to have some sort of like mini game involved with that. That keeps it interesting. As long as it's not annoying. Show me the interference. Yeah, and you can see there's actually a current that we put in the in the wormholes, and you sort of see the particles that are giving you the idea of where the center line current is. And you have to anticipate to keep on the course because if you don't you go off and you go into the boundaries of the wormhole you could end up just being spat out in just space in the middle of nowhere oh look at the oh my god i i thought that i thought that was because of the i thought that was because of pyro go, go back to the screen i don't want to see this Wow. Around, 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 that's actually even better than I thought it, like that's a better yeah, first iteration than I thought it was gonna be. We are now in the pyro system and we The fire Radiating through, refracting through, looked so. The, the other side, by the way, has got an awesome yeah. light on the side. Yeah. Where's all that fire being generated from? Station, Sam. There we oh, go. There we go. <laughs> it feels different, doesn't it? Like it feels like a different. <laughs> you call... I'll be impressed if you get this twist. <laughs> if you're gonna call it. Look at all the lightning, man. That looks sick. Hit it. Ah, they ended it. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. We made it. No crashes. Close one. Close one on the on the on the interaction. Good job. <laughs> All right. So, so uh, hang on a sec. I think it's. I get another. There should be a slide that we go to. Not a ship, a slide, come on, another slide. 
<laughs> there you go. Anyway, so in this coming year, um, we were sort of showing you what we're going to do. So we are going to have the pyro system next year. Uh, obviously, uh, that brings in jump points. We're going to have dynamic weather. Uh, you were going to be, you know, Microtech, you're going to get uh, the planet itself in uh, 3.8, uh, but uh, we'll be opening up new Babbage in 3.9. We've got moons of Microtech that come in, I think, in 3.9 too. Uh, <laughs> and we'll okay. continuing on the uh, development of the SOX and the eye cache and the persistence, and it's pretty damn exciting. I'm really, it's kind of coming together. And at the detail that I didn't think anyone thought would be possible. So, uh, I, you know, <laughs> hopefully you guys liked it. He still feels like a little kid making this game. So, so I'd like to give a big shout out to, uh, you know, everyone on stage that's helped with the demo here, you know, Glenn and Simon, Joe and Rob are backstage somewhere. Thank that was really much. cool. Uh, they did a great job. Todd, Mike, Richard, John, who I didn't pull up. He got lucky. He didn't have to go in front of people. Jared over there. Um, also, all, we got, I think there's about 200 developers or so here from the, Man the mostly the Manchester, but some the German office, some the Austin office, and the LA office. So thank you, I mean, to all the developers because I can stand up here and you guys all clap. And I love how the jump points really are interactive. I'm not doing all this stuff. There's a lot of really talented developers that do everything that you've been seeing that. here, seeing uh, during the day, and they've worked really hard. And I think. What were you saying about like the? I recommend audiobooks so you can fit them in with drafts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not a bad idea, actually. Interact with people that are appreciating the work they're doing. Uh, so uh, it's good, and I want to say thank you to all. Our are they long books? But really, really. Like the first one's like three. 340 pages? Oh, I forgot what it was. Let me look it up. And then, and then we also have, uh, you know, obviously the event staff and the volunteers have done an amazing job with this Citizen Con. I mean, wandering around, it's, yeah, it's brilliant. I mean, going back to the very first <laughs> ones and to what we are now, it's amazing. How long is uh, Leviathan yeah, Thank you to everyone that's put the show together. Uh, I think, uh, I don't know what Leia is, but uh, she was producing it. But she 577. Well, it's longer than I remember. She did an amazing job. Uh, yeah, I only got through like a couple hundred pages. To everyone on our operations, support, marketing, thank you. you for I didn't, really didn't like the casting job for a while. Um, but they, they grew on me. I especially didn't like the lead guy for a while. It's getting a little more real every day. But it definitely, uh, you, really, definitely totally grew on me. Out there on the internet, everyone here. Uh, you know, we couldn't be here. We I'm glad you said that because I've been meaning to want to get back into that and I haven't, I haven't thought about it. So I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, so, yeah. I'm going to pick that up. Very thankful. And I guess we talked about maybe do you want to see the parrot commercial one last time or something? And then we get some drinks and I'll be there and sign things. And okay. All right. Let's do the carrot commercial. And thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> let's show the carrot commercial again. I want to go back and listen to the lore makers guide to the galaxy for pyro. Amos ever. Yeah. <laughs> Amos was spot on, wasn't he? Jesus. Ah, oh, I can't think of her name. The used to say, the one with a one really unique things. accent. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's where I I, I I I was watching the old stuff, and I come back into the economy panel. I was like, "Whoa, what is this?" Like, because that's right up my alley. I'm always, <laughs> that's that's the stuff I really care about. Is, we all wonder how's this economy going to work. Out. How can I be unique? How can I be different? How can I? It was more than that. So I definitely want to go back and watch it. After this commercial, I'm going to sign off and uh, get some lunch, then I'm going to come back and watch it. A stranger in my own world. I set out.
You think you'll actually be able to repel him, game? <laughs> Ooh, is there a sale going on? I gotta check that, too. Robert's space. Man, this is so Inception. Not Inception. Interstellar. This is a place to call home. The sales are listed by day somewhere, and all the ships are going on sale and are being shown at the expo event in game. Yeah, I gotta. Uh, what planet's the expo event on? I forgot about that. I actually, I'm actually going to check that. <laughs> Carrick is home. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I can never remember it either, Lorville. That's, uh... Yeah. Up and up. Thank you. Awkward claps. They don't know what to do. That was cool. That was really cool. Wow. I'm a sucker for the for the cloth physics. I cannot wait. And just the fact they're putting an object in, within the object container environment. So I could toss my coat on the ground. You can come along and pick it back up off the ground. Like, that's just... You haven't seen that. We haven't seen that in a game. Like, and that's the stuff I, I have a feeling like you can start sh putting that in people's hands. People are going to start getting it. You know? Alright, buddy. Oh, have a good night. You must be over you must be over there. You got the host. Thanks for stopping by, man. Yeah, definitely, hundred percent. I'd love to I'd love to play too. I'm uh I'm not synced with my current organization very much, so I I, th I need a different crew. So yeah, definitely. Alright, thanks for joining, guys. That was fun. I'm going to get back on f for the others, so I'm going to get back on, and we're going to um, check out the uh, economy panel, because I really want to see that. So, do a little bit of discussion on that. Alright, signing off. Take care, guys. <laughs>
challenging us. 